June 10th, 2019. It is uh, 28 years, 11 months, and 16 days since I masturbated and had an affair. We're talking about part three of bad relationships. In the eighth grade, I met a girl who I was completely enthralled with. Her name was Cindy, and Cindy was in eighth grade, and Cindy was the first girl I ever saw with large breasts. I didn't know girls had large breasts. And she was smart, and she was funny, and she was coquettish, and she was sexy, and she had pretty legs, and she, she smelled good, and she dressed well, and she sashayed around, and she flirted just like, you know, you think it was out of Gone with the Wind. I mean, it was really out of page, and that's exactly who she was, her role model was. And she could sing, and, uh, and she was lovely. She was just a lovely woman. The problem was that Cindy was in love with somebody two years older than her named Jeff, who just didn't care nothing about her. Jeff was having sex with three women and getting drunk all the time, you know, and, and uh, he, did, he was a senior, and he just didn't care. So Jeff didn't care about Cindy. Cindy didn't care about me, but I love Cindy. It was my first real crush. Real crush. And I just had everything, I had my whole heart into it. But it was another example of bad judgment on my part that I had learned, just like Beethoven, not knowing who he was. He didn't know that he was the greatest musician of all time, but that he still wasn't royalty. And he, the women and the royalty said, look, you haven't got that kind of money. You haven't got that kind of power. You haven't got that kind of connection. You may be the greatest musician in the world, but you're not us. And, and, and that's a harsh thing, that caste system that was part of, you know, 19th century Europe. But it's very real, and it's very real here, too. Somebody in the, in the eighth grade ain't going to be able to date somebody in the 10th grade. You know, that's a lesson Cindy didn't learn, not knowing to date somebody in the 12th grade. But it was bad judgment on my part. And that judgment, the ability to make an assessment, is this person appropriate, would, would follow me all my life until I got in recovery. And people are afraid, well, I don't want to judge anybody. That's a really stupid, stupid move to not use my judgment. There's a difference between judging people and having judgment. Is this person appropriate for me? You know, like, for example, are they involved with somebody? You have to, I have to make a judgment. Cindy was involved with somebody. Is this person age appropriate for me? No, she wasn't. Is this person uh, somebody who uh, physically matches me? That's another thing. It's important to make judgments about somebody who are... That, that is this a physical match for me? Like my wife and I currently have a vast physical age difference, but we're very much matched physically uh, and, and very much matched emotionally and very much matched spiritually. It's in, the partnership comes from the word par, on par. Are you equal with that person? And so you have to make judgments. Am I equal? And if you, if you say this, what's really hard is a codependent is saying, this person is not my equal. Look, I'm Look yourself straight in the eyes. This person is not my equal. And if you don't do that, what you'll do is you'll end up using somebody because you're trying to be a nice guy. Oh, I'm, we're just the same. And what you do is you, if you date somebody who's not is, is on your level, then you end up using them and they feel hurt. By the same token, if you, somebody dates you and you're not them, they're using you. And that can happen too. And that's what Susan did. Uh, that's what uh, uh, Cindy did with me. And my heart just, just, just killed me. It just killed me. It just killed me. But it taught me the lesson. And I finally started sitting back and you know, saying, well, you know, here I am in eighth grade for seven years. Things ain't been going so good. You know? It didn't occur to me that I had a problem. And I, I wouldn't talk to anybody about it. But that was that was the beginning of when I started saying, wait a second, wait a second. And then came somebody else who changed everything. I ran across, I'm not even going to say her name. Her name, I'm just going to call her C. And C was the first person to introduce me to genital orgasmic sexuality. And that was heaven. C was poor. And she came from a terrible family where her mother had gotten killed and her father was an alcoholic. And, but she was incredibly sweet and unbelievably sexy, unbelievably. And I loved her and she loved me. And she introduced, and she had been, been being sexual. Now, by this time I was 16, I'd never been sexual. I, I was kind of a late bloomer. And she introduced me to that. And I, it was El Dorado, it was the Elysian Fields, it was heaven, it was paradise. But the problem was, is that we weren't the same, we weren't in the same place. We weren't. I was trying to codependently save her and become a Christian because I was a Christian at that point. 
And so I was manipulating her by bringing her to, to prayer meetings and churches and stuff like that, trying to control her, trying to save her from our alcoholism that she grew from and her poverty and trying to save her and, and from her not knowing anything about a religion or God. And that's not partnership. You don't save partners. That's not what you do. But the combination of sex and my codependence would just render my life <laughs> unbelievably painful. And I was dating somebody who was not appropriate. You know, my, my best friend at the time once said to me, he said, Steve, I've known you for 30 years and you've never dated a woman who was worth your time. I didn't know anything about recovery, but what's important about that is this. I have to make a judgment and say, is this person appropriate for me? Because if I don't, it'll just be pain. And this is the last of the bad relationships where they all end up like this, or they end up like this, or they end up like this. I'm going to start talking about how things can work in the next video. So these are the last of the three about how things are bad with codependent, relation addiction, romance addiction, and love addiction stuff. Let's get out of the sewer and into the light.